Good morning. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. And it's going to be one of those days. A little bit crazy, a little bit wild. Um, I've been cutting masks because my husband's and I mask. Our masks have been so used, washed over and over that, you know, they're really bad. So we need new mask. Now, granted. I understand that cloth masks, according to the studies and the tests, don't do you any good. However, when we go into the cancer center, they ask us to put on one of their paper masks. I do not like the odor, the smell of the, pla of the paper mask. It's, it's a chemical that's put on the mask um, to help, you know, kill some of the bacteria, things that come through there. So I put it over my mask. I'm perfectly fine with that. I understand that. So, but, you know, now they found a new variant in Greece. So we're stuck with this, you know. Might as well get used to it. Now, you know, I told you about Michael's yesterday. I hadn't checked my email in quite some time. But I did check it, and um, I had canceled Nick Great. I got charged for January's Nick Great. Now I never got the sneak peek because I wouldn't have chosen it, but I canceled it. So we got charged the thirty-seven ninety-six or whatever it is, you know, for the regular membership. So. <laughs> You can look forward to a giveaway once that shows up on my door. Because <laughs> it's alpaca. And yes, I know it's hypoallergenic. However, there are a lot of people that are allergic to alpaca. And I am one of them. As my son is. So. What are you going to do, right? Alright, I don't have any finished items today. Just don't. Um, what I do have are whips that are in progress. And the first one I'm going to show you is the um, look, it's already volunteering to come out of its shell. Is my uh, marquee matinee afghan. I am choosing to do that. Afghans are something I love to make. So, um, of course, you know, Silence of the Lamb poster is one that everyone is using. And um, some of the colors that were in that were white, gray, black, yellow, um, red for blood. And uh, some of it looks like an orange, so I'm going to use those colors in my afghan. But what I'm doing is the block stitch for that with the J-hook and that's as far as I've gotten so far. For those of you that don't know about Silence of the Lambs, one of the things I would suggest is that you actually look at the moth. The moth that was used, they used the death moth, um, but the death moth is like a black and gray. So they used the outline of that moth and colored in with the yellow that you know this fella liked and the red and everything but on the face of the moth it looks like there's a clown or a skull it is not a skull if you actually pull that up closer you'll see it is three women's naked women positioned to look that way um, and from what I understand that was an homage to the first three women that this fella had killed because this is based Silence of the Lambs is based on a true story uh, a gentleman who um, <sighs> liked to uh, kill women skin them and use parts of their skins to make a all over costume for himself that's the best way I can describe it he was a little weird so um there are a lot of colors you can use in that, and so those are the colors that I am using. Now this is the 
shirt that I had started and this is where I picked it up right here so I've got this much more done all I have to do is the back so I'm just working on the back of this of the sweater to get finished with it and then there's only one other thing that I've been working on and that is the calming comfort afghan by the crochet crowd by Jean um, Now I love it because it has a lot of texture. It's absolutely stunning. And this is through round 42, whatever. It's through week three. I mean, I'm completely done with week three. And as you can see, it's a pretty good span. It's probably about four feet so far. Um has a lot of texture now there's only one thing that I don't like about a lot of the Afghans that uh, Mikey does with the crochet crowd that have a lot of texture and here's the thing that I don't like he uses rounds so you're completely going in rounds and rounds of course when you go in rounds you will see that your item starts to skew either depending on whether you're right handed or left handed will skew towards the left or skew towards the right and that's because you're going in rounds um, it has to do with the nature of the way your stitches are because you're constantly doing them in one direction as opposed to flipping your work every other row where you get more of a flattened surface, a square or a rectangle if you're doing a rectangle. But that's the only downside. It has a lot of great texture. Um, you can block it out, but I find even when you block it, it doesn't really truly block out completely. Um, I mean, it's acrylic. It's going to go back unless you actually do a steam block and kill it so that it can't go back to its shape once it's washed and I don't like doing that because um, it tends to make them a little crunchy this is the second skein so far um, I believe he said you need four of the one pounders we ha I think we only have one more week left so yeah, and as you can see, it's getting much larger as you go, so there's that, right? Um, that basically is it. I will give you a little bit of an update on Thomas. Um, we did see the radiologist. The radiologist recommended um, he wants to refer him to a GI surgeon in... Danville to remove that large tumor that's there but we've been waiting on a call waiting on a call so I'd suggested to Thomas that maybe he should call find out exactly how long we should be waiting for this referral and because I'll tell you the big thing when we first moved here um, I had some abdominal issues and what felt like abdominal bruising right at my belly button and lower. So my doctor then did a CAT scan and they thought what they were seeing was cancer. Um, and this was in the end of August, that first year we were here. It took them till the end of September to call me to make an appointment. And the appointment that... Uh, Geisinger made was January the 2nd and this was for suspected cancer so I, I just Geisinger is a good hospital they're a great trauma center but they're really slow on the uptake when you get a referral it takes forever and ever and ever and uh, it shouldn't be that way but anyway when he called he he was told they just got a call, the doctor, the, they have relayed the message that Thomas wasn't a candidate. So the radiologist and the uh, 
oncologist want to have a conference with this doctor to discuss. So we're still up in the air, don't know what's going on. It is what it is, right? All right, guys, are you ready for a little what in tarnation? Because here we go. <laughs> Los Angeles Mega Mansion becomes most expensive property in U.S. A 100,000 square foot Los Angeles Mega Mansion officially became the most expensive property in the U.S. when it was listed Friday for $295 million. The Bel Air home, known as The One, was listed Friday by Brandon Williams of the Beverly Hills Estates and Aaron Kerman of Aaron Kerman Group at Compass. The home was built by developer Niall Naomi with the stated goal of creating the most expensive home in the country with an eventual asking price of $500 million. Miami's debt on the one grew to more than $180 million, and in 2021 it was placed into receivership. A bankruptcy agreement struck in December will see the house go to auction if it does not sell by February the 7th. Williams said he has already received offers from a Saudi royal, a wealthy Chinese buyer. He said he expects further offers from cryptocurrency buyers looking for investments and I believe it has 21 bedrooms 42 baths a full bowling alley a full nightclub bar um, indoor swimming facility it features a lot of things and there's video so you'll get to see all that it features I don't know. It's a great deal if you have the money. Airline returns Precious Family Letters Left on Plane in Chicago. A file of Precious Family Letters left behind on a plane that landed in Chicago was returned to the family weeks later thanks to an airline, airline employee's persistence. Rachel Tagolia said her mother Lois died in 1990 and a cousin recently found the stash of letters that Lois had sent to her brother Phil between the 1940s and 1970s. Tagolia said she handed the letters to her brother so he could scan them and make digital copies, but he accidentally left them behind on his Southwest Airlines flight from New York to Chicago's Midway Airport. She said it wasn't until hours after landing that her brother realized the letters were missing. Sarah Hafner, a baggage service office supervisor for Southwest at Midway, said she arrived at work a few days off to find a file of letters in the office safe. She said valuables usually are sent to lost luggage warehouse in Dallas after 24 hours, but managers decided to hold on to the letters in the hopes of finding the owner. And they did. Hafner said the letters had been in the safe for about two weeks when her manager told her officials had struck out in their search for owners of the file, and she was invited to make her own efforts before sending the letters to the warehouse. Thank goodness she did. Hafner said she had the name Rachel Tagolia to go on, but there was no record of her being on any recent flights. She said she turned to Google and found someone with that name in Ohio along with a phone number. At 9 p.m. one night, I got this call, Tagolia told CNN. She said she was Sarah from Southwest, and I stopped her. I said... Can you see the tears? Did you find the letters? I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Hafner said it was immensely rewarding to find the owner of the letters. This was the most precious thing I've ever had to locate, she said. When monetary stuff goes missing, people are relieved we have it. Phones, laptops, purses. They're happy you have them, but they're not sentimentally attached. 
Tegolia's sister-in-law was sent to the airport to bring the letters home. I can assure you, they have been scanned now, Tegolia said. You know, sometimes animals get in places they shouldn't be. And this next story is exactly that. Sea lion rescued from San Diego Highway, miles from the ocean. Police and animal rescuers responded to a San Diego highway where a sea lion was spotted attempting to cross the road several miles from the nearest shoreline. The California Highway Patrol said 911 dispatchers started receiving calls about 9.40 a.m. Friday about a sea lion attempting to cross Route 94 near Route 15. Chip officers said several cars stopped on the roadway and bystanders directed traffic to allow the sea lion to cross to the center divide. Chip officers arrived on the scene and kept the animals safe from traffic while awaiting a rescue team from SeaWorld. Jenny Smith, the supervisor with the rescue program at SeaWorld San Diego, said the sea lion was several miles from the ocean. She said it is rare to see such an animal so far from the water. We got in our truck immediately and rushed down to ensure that the sea lion wasn't hit by a car. Smith told San Diego Un Union Tribune, being on the freeway is very, very unsafe for a sea lion. No doubt. Smith said rescuers aren't sure how the sea lion ended up on the highway, but they believe it may be the same animal spotted elsewhere recently. It does fit the description of an animal we got, had gotten reports about. They've been seen in precarious areas, but they've all been next to water. Smith said the sea lion was being taken to SeaWorld for examination and rehabilitation for eventual release. This has happened a few times before, but never, as far as I know, never this far inland, Smith said. Cows on the interstate. It's not a good thing. Cowboys help state police round up loose cows on Idaho Highway. The Idaho State Police said a group of cowboys on horseback assisted troopers attempting to round up loose cows on the highway. State Police said troopers responded to a call about cattle blocking traffic on Interstate 84 in Caldwell. And they arrived to find two cows in the roadway, while a third had jumped a fence and was safely away from traffic. With help from the cow's owner, the troopers used their best wrangling skills and at one point positioned their patrol callers to try and direct the cows back into the owner's trailer, police said. Great idea. Didn't work. Some friends of the cow's owner showed up on a horseback and the cowboys were able to wrangle the cattle into a trailer. Many thanks to officers with Caldwell Police and deputies with Canyon County Sheriff's Office for also using their best wrangling skills to give this story a happy ending. And there's video. Now, I don't know if I'll be able to read this next story without crying, but I'm going to try. Dog held a hero after leading New Hampshire police to hypothermic owner after truck crash. A dog is being held a hero after it led New Hampshire police to a mangled truck its owner had been driving with a friend when he crashed. According to New Hampshire State Police, a trooper and Lebanon police officers responded to the report of a loose German Shepherd on Interstate 89 at the New Hampshire-Vermont border in Lebanon late Monday. When the officers tried to get close to the dog, it refused to be corralled and continued to run northbound and cross over the state line into Vermont, almost alerting them to what was off the roadway. Lieutenant Daniel Batasari Baltasari of New Hampshire State Police told WPTZ-TV of the dog's behavior. A short time later, the trooper and officers found the damaged section of the guard rail near the I-89 and I-91 junction. According to New Hampshire State Police, 
The officers then observed a badly damaged pickup truck, truck that had rolled over. As the officers investigated further, they realized that both occupants of the pickup truck had been ejected from the vehicle and were hypothermic and seriously injured. One of these men, Cam Laundry, 31, was later identified as the dog's owner. Tinsley is a Shiloh Shepherd, which is a breed very similar to a German Shepherd and is a year old. Laundry told NECN and NBC 10 Boston in an interview Tuesday that he was knocked out when the truck rolled and he was thrown from the vehicle. It's honestly remarkable, Laundry said. She's my little guardian angel, you know. It's a miracle that she had that kind of intelligence to do what she did. Police officers attending to the injured man said the dog was incredibly well behaved. The whole time we were starting our patient care, it sat there nice and calm, right next to its owner. Lebanon is located in far western North Hampshire, right at the border with Vermont, about 125 miles northwest of Boston. The weather that night was extremely cold in Lebanon. The high temperature on Monday reached 22 degrees and the low was 11, which is just about average for that time of year. Both men were taken to Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center to be treated. There was a second dog involved in the crash, the passenger's bulldog. Police said it was escaped. The it escaped the crash, but sadly was hit by a vehicle and killed on the vehicle on the interstate. That's sad. State troopers say Laundry faces a charge of driving under the influence. He acknowledged in local interviews that he'd had some drinks but didn't believe the amount he consumed was too much for him to operate a vehicle. It definitely was a wake-up call, Laundry said in the interview, expressing sadness over the loss of his passenger's dog, but noting he's glad he and his friend weren't hurt worse. People who have consumed alcohol can be particularly vulnerable, vulnerable to hypothermia because it causes the blood vessels in the extremities to dilate, causing the body to lose heat quickly. So it was lucky the authorities found the injured men when they did. We've had, you know, a lot of amazing stories with our trained canines and stuff, but not for just a household pet to lead you down their road and play a role in saving some lives. We're always thankful. Sorry, Lebanon Chief Police Roberts told NBC 10. Laundry said Tinsley never leaves his side. We're always together in that truck that got wrecked. She's always my co pilot. I'm just thankful she's always with me, Laundry said of his faithful companion, adding, Everybody loves Tinsley. And she's a beautiful dog. And there's video of the interview. You know, cats are notorious for getting themselves into predicaments. And I kind of feel for this poor little orange kitty. Because it got itself into a predicament. Family cat accidentally donated to thrift store with old recliner. Cat was reunited with its Colorado family after being accidentally donated to a thrift store along with an old recliner. Denver Animal Protection said personnel responded to the Ark thrift store in Denver when employees discovered there was a cat hiding inside a recliner, a chair that had been donated earlier in the day. They were able to extract the feline from the chair, but employees found the animal's microchip information was out of date. Luckily, the family that donated the chair had discovered the cat was missing and went back to the thrift store to see if the feline had stowed away with the seat. The store directed the family to Dap. The cat, named Montequilla, was not injured and was reunited with her family. So there's a lesson here. If your pets have microchips, Make sure that they are updated. 
Otherwise, who knows what would have, what would have happened to that poor little kitty. That's it for today. I'll see you again soon. Everybody have a great week. And remember, choose kindness.